Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another unboxing. Today I have for you an other package from our friends at Linsol that, of course, uh, I ordered myself because Linsol doesn't send me anything even after asking. But uh, yeah, today we are unboxing the Setna Fit uh, Max. Uh, for true wireless, not to confuse with you, but not, not for true wireless. Um, and I think the difference is just these are a bit short on the inside. Uh, because my ear candle is relatively short, I thought those might fit me better. So we see what those can. And we unbox something that I, uh, at least when I ordered this, there was nothing out there at all. No review, no measurements, nothing. Um, now there's another dude on YouTube who also has looked at them. But yeah, we look at the Oshida E20. And uh, yeah, what this thing is, is a two dynamic driver IEM, uh, one beryllium coated and one uh, diamond like carbon. So that's an interesting configuration. And I think we start with the uh, faster unboxing and that is here the Zetna Fit Max. Authentic product, yes, 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 thank you very much. Uh, let's see if I can remove the sticker or if I need a pair of scissors. I can just remove the scissors, that have uh, the sticker I mean. Easy. So, yep, that's packaging. If you've seen one Zetna of it, you should have seen more. Um, I got SS here, so you can see, because mirror can is pretty small. And this is 10.4 millimeter in diameter and in length of 6.9. So definitely on the shorter side of things. Um, inner diameter, it says here 6.9, uh, but I'm not sure on how fit of nozzle I am this actually can fit. And here, that's the tip. Uh, so far, it doesn't look like anything special and I'm not particularly fond of this white color here. But let's take a look at it in detail. So uh, I have an additional protective mesh on the front. Um, if this does anything to sound, uh, we'll have to figure out, uh, of course, subjectively and by measuring. And yeah, these are definitely short tips. And oh yeah, they um, have the same problem as the normal Zetna ear fit. This does not uh, squish easily. Like the, uh, the mantle, as you can see, is definitely thick. And I was not a fan of that on the normal Zetna ear fit tips. Uh, but those were definitely longer and these are far shorter. But maybe it's working better here, question mark. So yeah, I will have to figure that out. But um, my hope for this being more comfortable is pretty slim. It's just, it's too hard. Like this is just taking too much energy to squish like this. And yeah, price-wise, these are definitely not cheap. I think they're about 15 bucks or so for four pairs. So um, up there, definitely. And I don't know if they will be worth it, uh, but I will definitely try to give them a fair shot and see. Okay, and then next, let's take a look at the actual IEM here, the Aushida E20. Of that, we quickly grab a pair of scissors or a knife. Back with a pair of scissors here, and today we are using um, this cute uh, thing here. Uh, but it should do the job just fine. We just want to open the box here, uh, not uh, do anything else particularly fancy with it. So, yep. Uh, oops. Oops. Instantly destroyed packaging. So you can't see the oops. Well, nobody will know. It's just a packaging. And then we remove the plastic as usual. And oh, they even have a graph here. Um, nice, I like to see that. Uh, I think the other one where I, uh, with other unboxing or first impressions, they said it's even supposed to be let sure if I remember correctly. I don't know. Um, we'll have to do some research about that. But yeah, you can see in graph here and that clearly is just sub base boosted. Like very nicely even defined uh, below 100 hertz even. That's rather unique. That's like monarch-like, I want to say. And yeah, this looks like harmonish inspired. So also uh, actually graph at least they showing here looks good to me. Uh, of course, uh, you have to figure that out by yourself. But yeah, you can see here 10 millimeter beryllium coated dynamic plus 8 millimeter diamond like carbon. Actually, that's decent configuration. Like, I don't know why you have two of those. Uh, like, they should both be good for base. But yeah, uh, that's at uh, least interesting. And then this is easily opening. Like, I really just hold it like this and you can see it sliding out. I like to see that. And also, color scheme, uh, definitely unique. I've not seen this color scheme anywhere. And this is the IM, and uh, price-wise, um, ooh, it's actually looking cool. Uh, this is clocking at like 50 bucks, and as you can see, this is supposed to be gold, but it's more like bronze overall, I would say. And unfortunately, it feels a bit light in the hand, though. Like, definitely, it's not a like, sturdy feeling IM. Uh, 
But they got the looks you definitely feel like this is cool with the mesh inside to protect it from dust. And uh, this is metal? Yeah, that's actually some metal faceplate. And then we have the plastic here um, with a not color match 2 pin connector. And let's quickly move the tip here. That's a thick nozzle wall. It looks like 6.2 or 6.4 millimeter. Uh, this is again 3D printed. No, I don't think. Oh, is it? Actually, it is 3D printed. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it in the picture here. It is 3D printed. That has the standard uh, like texture of 3D printing. Um, that did not work well on the um, Khan that also had 3D printed nozzle that basically uh, co co corroded the spring tips I used. Uh, but other than that, this is looking fine to me. Uh, it's like black plastic here. Uh, it has R on here and uh, yeah, wait, is there a pressure hole at all? No. <laughs> so, um, fun story, the uh, KZPR2 also is open back in quotes, but <laughs> I still get some driver flex occasionally with it when you insert it, because uh, there's no back port here, and uh, this could happen here as well, but I have to figure, like, of course, try it out. But yeah, there's no pressure hole whatsoever, which I think probably is for tuning reasons. Um, but yeah, generally, the seems here yeah, seem, seem to be made nice, ha ha ha. Um, I don't see much of a problem here in terms of build. Uh, the tip you get with it, standardly mounted, is a uh, white bore random ass tip. Uh, could be actually the one I also got with the, uh, with the, uh, uh, not the Khan. Um, uh, if the Kiwi is Quintet and the Kailua, they look the same. And then we have here QC pass and the manual. And oh, we got a carrying case, which is absolutely random, like uh, you've seen that a million times at other IEMs. Um, it's still reasonably fine, like you can see it squishes a bit, the zipper is smooth enough. Uh, smoother than other cases that I have had here, so that good. And when we open it, and first let's take a look at accessories. Um, yeah, this is, I think, the same tips you get also with the Quintet, because the Quintet, these tips here, as you can see, they are pretty similar to the uh, Z9 Fit Max because they are very short and uh, they're very wide bore outlet. But these are far more squishy, definitely working good for me so far. And then we have these random ear tips here, which come also SM and L. Uh, no foam, but at like 50 bucks, absolutely acceptable. And here, oh, actually, this is not the same case as I'm used to. Uh, you can put this IEM beneath this strap and your accessories here. That's neat, I uh, like to see that. And then we take a look at the cable. Mm -hmm. You go out of the picture. Yep, so this is the cable and actually that's that's not bad at all. Wow, uh, I'm impressed by this cable. Immediately smooth enough and also the strands are relatively thick. Nice man, nice one. Um, color matching bow is... Um, uh, where's my IEM uh, here? Let's take a look at the IEM again. Uh, that is not a great color matching, as you can see. <laughs> Nowhere we have this gray again. But this cable for this price seems to be pretty damn well. Like, it's smooth enough. It feels sturdy. Wait, let's take a look at the strain release here. Okay, that's too hard. It doesn't really strain. And this one is too slippery. That's uh, definitely improvement uh, possible here. But other than that, for 50 bucks, wow, uh, I'm impressed. This is, this is a nice cable. Hmm, yeah. Chin slider, though. Oh. Also, chin slider is uh, not too too uh, too uh, too solid on here or too easy. It stays in place. Also, a nice job done here. Let's take a look at the ear hooks. Rubberization hmm, on the thicker side of things. Angle though seems to be fine. Uh, on your case, definitely on the thicker side. That is discreet and not very squishy. Uh, that could be lightly improved. I think so. But again, metal connector here. The R and L marking uh, clearly visible on the outside. Um, I like that. Uh, so far, uh, yeah, that's a nice start. And uh, I'm willing really to give this a fair shot uh, before measuring it myself. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it so far. Um, if you have criticisms, if you have suggestions, questions, or any other feedback, please leave a comment. And with this, Inspector out.